the last video I posted about uh, my case in the in front of the main um, Superior Court in Kennebec County was um, the oral arguments and um, today I wanted to add on YouTube um, the brief or, or the judge's decision her her um, order on petitions ADC appeal which um, um, the background will be in this brief so I'm gonna limit my comments since the case is ongoing um, but this was her decision um, and it has a pretty um, interesting um, outcome uh, there's a twist at the end so I think you're gonna like this but I'm just gonna read the actual um, order which um, I have on my iPad here uh, anyway it's uh, Joshua Gray versus uh, State of Maine Department of Public Safety and she writes before the court is petitioner Joshua Gray's ADC uh, petition for review of the Department of Public Safety's denial of his application for a professional investigator license the following reasons the for the following reasons the petition is granted so what's interesting is I won this it's granted but um, the twist you'll see at the end background Josh Gray is a licensed professional investigator in Tennessee Vermont Massachusetts and New Hampshire on January 26 2018 Gray applied for an investigator's license in Maine. As part of its review of Gray's application, the department conducted, and they're talking the Department of uh, the State Police who grant licenses, the department conducted a background investigation which included, in, which included an investigation into Gray's use of social media. This investigation revealed that Gray had published numerous statements concerning a fatal police shooting which occurred in Vassalboro, um, in 2017. The dominant theme of these statements is that an officer who was involved in the shooting, Lieutenant Scott Ireland, is a dirty cop whose career has been plagued by lying, internal affairs trouble, and abuse of power issues, and who committed first-degree murder while he was likely drunk. As a result of its investigation, the department concluded that Gray had made statements which demonstrate he lacks the requisite competency and fitness of character to act as a PI in the state of Maine. Consequently, the department denied Gray's application on August 31, 2018. Gray's attorney received a copy of the denial on September 14, 2018, and October 11, uh, 2018, Gray filed a petition for review of the denial of his application. Now, that's the background of the case. Um, as the judge understood it, there are a few um, things in there that I wish um, we had the opportunity to clarify because um, it's not 100%. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's the broad stroke of the background. It's not the detail of the background. There are mistakes in there, but you can't fault the judge for, um, uh, I mean, she has a kind of a limited window into the case. Um, and so that's the background according to her. Um, of course, you can go back and watch. I posted videos about every phase of this um, from the original um, appeal to all the briefs that were filed to the oral arguments. And then this is just her decision. All right, standard of review. The court reviews an administrative agency's decision for abuse of discretion, error of law, or findings not supported by the evidence. An administrative decision will be sustained if, on the basis of the entire record before it, the agency could have fairly and reasonably found the facts as it did. I mean, I'm leaving out where she quotes some um, um, legal cases. The party seeking to vacate the agency decision bears the burden of persuasion. So that would be our side, my, uh, my lawyer and, and, and my, my defense, or we have the burden. When an agency concludes that the party with the burden of proof failed to meet the burden, the court will reverse the, that, determ uh, that determination only if the record compels a contrary conclusion to the exclusion of any other reference, inference. All right, so that is her standard of review, the discussion now. The state of Maine requires that professional investigators obtain a professional investigator license from the chief of the Maine State Police. 
In order to obtain an investigator's license, an applicant must demonstrate that they possess good moral character. Further, the chief may refuse to issue a license if the applicant has a. engaged in conduct that evidences a lack of ability or fitness to discharge the duty owed by the licensee to a client or the general public, or b. engage in conduct that evidences a lack of knowledge or the inability to apply principles or skills to carry out the practice for which the person is licensed. In this case, the chief of the Maine State Police determined that since early 2017, Gray had made postings on social media platforms, including his business official Facebook page, that included statements that are materially false. She um, put official business Facebook page in, in uh, parentheses. The chief further determined that by publishing such misleading statements publicly, Gray has demonstrated conduct that brings into question his ability to competently investigate and then report investigative findings with accuracy, objectivity, and without bias. The chief reasoned that from a consumer uh, protection perspective, these findings are of great concern. Consequently, the chief denied Gray's license based on the findings that Gray quote, lacks the requisite competency and fitness of character to act as a PI in the state of Maine, end quote. Gray argues that denying his application on the basis of his social media articles and posts violate his right to free speech and thus constitutes an error of law. Gray asserts that his social media postings are statements of opinion which were not likely to incite violence and that they were made in his capacity as a private citizen because, in his view, all speech in any form and by any method has always been ruled as protected except speech which incites imminent violence. Gray argues that his social media posts cannot be considered when determining whether he has good moral character. The department argues that many of Gray's statements are demonstrably false and that his support and that this supports a finding that Gray is dishonest and not able to accurately report facts and is incompetent to act as a professional investigator. I'm going to take a rare moment to add some commentary. The state is arguing that social media posts are equivalent of an investigative report here. That's what they're saying. That social media comments are the equivalent of writing an investigative report like you would send to a client. All right, back to the um, brief or the um, ruling. The department also points out that defamatory speech is not protected by the First Amendment. Um, And then they quote law. As a general principle, the First Amendment bars the government from dictating what we see or read or speak or hear. Freedom of speech, of course, has its limits. It does not embrace certain categories of speech, including defamation, incitement, obscenity, and pornography produced with real children. As a general matter, the state cannot exclude a person from the practice of law or from any other occupation in a manner or for reasons that contravene the due process or equal protection clause of the 14th Amendment. She cites law. And as a matter of First Amendment principles, a government may not regulate speech based on the motivating ideology, opinion, or perspective of the speaker. She cites law. In this case, the department's notice of denial shows that Gray's application was denied because of statements that he made on social media. I'm going to add commentary again. The only reason they denied me is because of social media posts. Further, back to the... um, decision. Further, the notice shows that the department's denial was based upon its disagreement with the viewpoints expressed in these statements. The department reasons that Gray should not receive a private investigator's license as the statements show that he is incompetent and lacks the necessary fitness of character. I'm going to add commentary again here. They're saying that I'm incompetent because I was critical of them. Remember, these statements on social media are about the very department that is approving my uh, PI license. So, to phrase it more simply, 
I was critical of them, and they denied my PI license. All right, back to the brief. The decision reasons that Gray should not receive a private investigator's license as the statements show that he is incompetent and lacks necessary fitness of character. This finding is in turn based solely on what the department characterizes as material false statements that Gray has made publicly. In other words, it is based on the department's disagreement with Gray's publicly stated opinion that the state trooper is a dirty cop with a history of internal affairs problem who committed murder. In its court filings, the department argues that the denial was not actually based upon Gray's public opinion about police corruption and competency, but rather that it was based on conduct which shows that Gray is unable to investigate with accuracy, objectivity, and without bias. In support of its argument, the department has provided a, provided a spreadsheet compiling Gray's statements and the department's findings regarding the um, purported veracity of each statement. All right, I'm going to stop here. That spreadsheet is clipped up in photos on my Facebook page. I took the entire spreadsheet and um, each bullet point that they did, I made, I, I did a screenshot and made a photo and posted it on my, um, on my uh, Facebook page. So the entire spreadsheet's on my Facebook page. If you want to um, go down my feed, you can see it. Uh, in support of its argument, the department has provided a spreadsheet compiling Gray's statements and the department's findings regarding the purported veracity of each statement. Additionally, the department has also submitted the Attorney General's investigative report on the use of deadly force by the state police during the 2017 Vassalboro shooting. A memorandum from Lieutenant Ireland, I mean from Lieutenant Anna Love of the uh, State Police Office of Professional Standards stating that Lieutenant Ireland does not have any history of being disciplined for misconduct and over 300 pages of statements that Gray has made on social media. All of this I posted to my social media. I haven't hidden a single thing. You can go through and you can see the Attorney General's report, you can see the letter from Lieutenant Love, you can see, um, of course, the 300 pages are, I haven't deleted anything. There's not a single thing I've deleted off my social media. Okay, although, and continuing with the decision, Although the department has offered evidence which supports its opinion that Lieutenant Ireland is not guilty of murder, and has not been subject to internal affairs discipline, there is no record evidence of the investigative methods Gray employed or the specific information Gray either utilized or ignored in reaching his conclusions about Lieutenant Ireland and the Maine State Police. Moreover, there is nothing in the record to suggest that whatever Gray did in regards to the shooting was an investigation as opposed to him making statements that were understandably perceived by the state actors to be false, outrageous, and offensive. The court concludes that the department's determination that Gray lacks the necessary competency to investigate is based primarily on the fact that Gray has reached opinions or conclusions about Lieutenant Ireland and the state police which are completely at odds with the departments and which do display a hostile bias toward Lieutenant Ireland. Further, although Gray's statements may arguably contain defamatory material, the department has overlooked two important considerations which the court cannot. First, the court in this uh, Rule ADC appeal is not in any position to adjudicate whether the statements constitute defamation against a public figure. More fundamentally, however, the Maine Supreme Court has recognized that statements made about or against public officials, even ones which are objectively false, inflammatory, or outrageous, are protected by a limited First Amendment privilege. See Plante v. Long, um, decided in 2017, which is an interesting case. If you want to do some homework or do have some side reading, read Plante v. Long. It's a main case decided at the Maine Supreme Court in 2017. Because the statements at issue here all concern and pertain to a matter of a public importance and public figures, a police shooting, the resulting investigation, and the police officer involved in the shooting, this appeal cannot be resolved in the usual manner by determining if there is competent evidence in the record to support the administrative decision. The petitioner is making a constitutional argument, which of course is something that can be done in an administrative appeal such as this one. 
The court has concluded that the issue, therefore, becomes what standard the department is required to apply to their statements in order to determine if the petitioner can be denied a license, private investigator license, um, as the department frames the issue, his competence and character. While the court could not find any main case in which a professional license was denied solely based on statements by an applicant in social media, the law court in Plante did, know, did not just reaffirm and reiterate the limited privilege that applies to allegedly defamatory statements made against public figures. It held that in order to um, overcome the privilege, a showing must be made by clear and convincing evidence that the statements were made with actual malice. Um, in essence, with knowledge that the statements were false or with reckless disregard of their truth or falsity. While the department understandably believes, based on their investigation of Lieutenant Ireland, that the statements were, were materially false, quote unquote, the law court clarified in Plante that the objective falsity of a statement or statements cannot by itself support a finding of actual malice. Um, next paragraph. In its notice of denial, the department does not make any finding whether petitioner made these statements with knowledge that they were false or with reckless disregard of their truth or falsity. This means that it has not provided any evidence showing that Gray acted with actual malice when he published his social media statements. Because the department focused solely on the objective falsity of Gray's statements, it applied the wrong legal standard to determine whether Gray lacks competency and good moral character because he made defamatory or false statements. Consequently, this matter must be remanded to the department to allow it to determine whether Gray, at the time he published his alleged defamatory social media posts, in fact knew that his statements were false or acted with high degree of awareness of their probable falsity. Conclusion. For the foregoing reasons, the entry will be the petitioner's ADC petition is granted in part. The decision of the Department of Public Safety is reversed and remanded to the department to the department to conduct an appropriate process or proceeding which would enable it to determine if the petitioner's statements were made with actual malice as defined by main law. The clerk is directed to incorporate this order into the docket. And that's the decision by um, Superior Court Justice uh, Michaela Murphy. As you can see, this order remanded it back to the state police to, to um, conduct an appropriate process or proceeding which would enable it to determine if I made my statements with actual malice. And of course, the actual malice standards, in fact, knew that the statements were false and acted with a high degree of awareness of their probable falsity. So after this decision was handed down on... Um, on uh, uh, July 18th, 2019 is when she dated it. Um, I immediately posted the decision to my social media and I got comments like, uh, like, well, it sounds like uh, she just gave them um, a reason to deny you again. My lawyer's reaction, I remember, was something like, uh, how the heck are they gonna prove that you made the statements with actual malice? And he, his um, reaction to this brief was that we won and that I would be licensed within a few weeks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will be posting additional videos because, um, spoiler alert, they did re-deny me and I'm currently going through a second ADC appeal. And I'll add one last thing. So far, between these two appeals, I have spent over $20,000 in legal fees. When you go up against the main state police or any um, public administration, government administration, whether you win in the end or you lose in the end, you always lose.